Yeah, I'm not going out walking this morning. It is absolutely tipping it down. So instead, let's make a flapjack. Okay guys, and here we are making our flapjack, but first we need to line our baking tray with tin foil. Uh, I'm nicking this trick from uh, Binging with Babish, or the Babish Culinary Universe as he is known, in that you put two pieces of tin foil, one in one direction, one in the other to ensure full coverage with some handy little handles sticking out the top so that you can remove your baked goods from your tray nice and easy. Don't forget to rub this down with butter so that it doesn't stick. Now, adding in 200 grams of your finest butter, 200 grams of your finest soft brown sugar, and two heaped tablespoons of golden syrup. Melt that over low heat until it's all thoroughly combined, and then turn the heat off and mix in 350 grams of your great rolled oats. Make sure to spill some on the cooker top and add it back into the mix, and keep stirring. Uh, it will be a bit sticky, but keep stirring and once it's all combined, pour it all into your buttered foiled baking tray, spread it all out into the corners, make it nice and even. Pat it down beautifully and then add it into the oven at 200 degrees Celsius. We're in the UK, we're using degrees Celsius, don't know what Fahrenheit is. At 30 degrees or until nicely golden brown like that. Remove from the oven and set it aside to cool. Into your clean saucepan, add another 150 grams of butter, a whole tin of sweetened condensed milk, 150 grams of soft brown sugar, and we're going to be putting in a small drizzle, probably about a teaspoon's worth of vanilla extract. And because we didn't get enough of this stuff, maybe about a tablespoon, a good healthy dollop of golden syrup. And of course, we're making caramel, be criminal not to add salt, so teaspoon of salt, in it goes. Over a low heat, melt this and whisk it together. You want it to bubble a little because you want it to get thicker. This is your caramel that's gonna be going over the top of your flapjack to make your millionaires flapjacks, and it is going to be beautiful. Look at that mix in action, gorgeous. Okay guys, I'm a level with you. I got distracted by a pigeon flying by outside the window and I took my mind and eye off the caramel for a moment and I kind of burnt it ever so slightly. But never mind, it will be absolutely fine. I'm sure I can fix this. So, uh, I had to sieve the caramel to try and get rid of some of the burnt bits. You, my clever people, will not do this. You will watch your caramel closely and whisk and whisk and whisk and make sure it doesn't burn by sticking to the bottom of the pan. Once again, pressing it smoothly and evenly into the corners, giving it a loving caress with the back of the spoon and removing another bit of burnt. And now we're on to the chocolate. First things first, you need to pay your tax to your girlfriend by giving her a piece of chocolate off camera. And uh, then you need to chop it up into lovely chunky bits. Put two thirds of your roughly chopped chunks into a glass Pyrex bowl. And the remaining third, uh, you're gonna wanna chop that really, really small. I'm talking like go to town, like get your blade, just keep chopping, choppy muck chopperson, and just keep, that's it, like that. Just keep on chopping, chop some more. I want this like chocolate dust, okay? So in your pan, boiling water, because we are going to be melting this chocolate. Put in your two thirds of roughly chopped chunks and well, yeah, melt it, start whisking. Keep it stirring, stirring. don't make it too hot. We want it to melt, we don't want it to burn or anything like that. So whiskey, whiskey business until it's nice and melted and then to your nicely melted chocolate, we're going to add our very finely chopped chocolate that we reserve, the thirds, because this is going to hopefully, fingers crossed, this is going to temper our chocolate, which means it'll come out looking gorgeous and smooth instead of milky, cloudy, chocolatey stuff. So again, over your caramel, spread it and spread it into the corners. Again, caressing it lovingly with the back of your spoon. Give it a wiggle, because uh, you thought it looked cool and then uh, drizzle it like you think you're an artist and put it in the fridge. 
And that is that. And okay, so once it's all nicely cooled, your chocolate is all solid and everything, don't do what I did and stick your finger in it. Uh, you're gonna try and use your foil handles to lift it out of the tray and realize that you probably didn't put in enough butter on your foil, so you're gonna turn it upside down, give it a gentle wiggle, realize that that's not gonna work either, give it a fierce wiggle, give up, smack it on the chopping board, and hey, there you go, success. It comes out of your tray. Spin it back around and then instantly realize that caramel, in its purest form, is incredibly sticky and gooey. Uh, realize that you did not put enough butter on in the slightest to stop this foil from sticking to the flapjack. Uh, rip it off, really go to town on ripping it off, realize that there are loads of tiny little bits that you need to rip off, thinking maybe you can get the knife in there to rip that off, maybe that would work. Eventually, it will come off and you'll be really happy about it. Get your knife in there. I found it best to sort of saw backwards and forwards through the chocolate layer uh, to get to the gooey caramel layer, at which point I just slice through it like a boss. And look at that glorious cross section. Flapjack on the bottom, sticky caramel in the middle, and evenly tempered chocolate on top. I realize at this point that yes, I probably should have put a tea towel underneath my chopping board to chop this to stop it from sliding about all over the place uh, like a maniac. But hey, you know, hindsight is a wonderful thing. So chop these into finger sized chunks or whatever size chunks that you fancy. You know what, if you wanna just cut it in half and just eat a whole half, who am I to judge, you know? I don't know your life, it's all good. So there we go. That is Millionaire's Flapjack. Okay guys, and there you have it. The Millionaire's Flapjack. So, my foil technique didn't exactly work. I kind of, I got that one from Binging with Babish or Basics with Babish, great channel. Go check it out, I'll put a link to below. I kind of cribbed the caramel and the chocolate from his Millionaire Shortbread video. Shout out to the guy, he is brilliant. Um, but yeah, the foil thing didn't really work for Flapjack, unfortunately. Uh, it, got a little, it got a little bit stuck. But otherwise, it worked out really, really well. I haven't tasted it yet. I'm very excited to try it. Um, don't leave your caramel alone, it will burn. Don't get distracted by pigeons flying by in the window. But without any further ado, let's taste this. Oh my God. Oh damn. That is amazing. Dav Ross, you've outdone yourself. So the caramel is very, very gooey. I probably needed to give it a little bit longer in the saucepan, cooking it on a lower heat. But otherwise, that was amazing. Sweet, the chocolate's nice and crunchy, the flapjack's really nice and crunchy. Maybe could have added a little bit more syrup to make it a bit gooey. But no, really good. Oh my God, that was amazing. I'm gonna get another bite. Nom, 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 nom. Oh yeah. Yes, that was incredible. Okay, so, Jack's Week next week. We're still having to be a bit inventive because we're still in lockdown in the UK. But if you liked it, please give it a like. If you want to subscribe and see more, hit that subscribe button. See you later, guys. Rip the foil.